All right, guys, we are here at Florida Audio Expo 2024. We are checking out Diptyque, very unusual speaker where I want to talk to you guys about all the technology behind us as well as these cool electronics. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delicello with AudioHawks. We are here with Aaron from Fidelity Imports. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing tremendous, Gene. Awesome Pleasure. to meet you. Absolutely. So, Aaron, tell me what is going on in this room. I'm seeing <laughs> spinning platters, beautiful audio flight electronics, but these speakers, I've never seen anything like this at the show. Planar magnetic, electrostatic, what do you sure. consider it? So these are planar magnetic speakers. Uh, these are actually the Diptyque DP140 Mark II. This is the middle of the road as far as the Diptyque's line up, 17,000 for the pair. The full Diptyque range starts at 5,000, all the way up to 50 for the reference model. But again, these are the middle pair recently refreshed. Uh, as you can see by the, uh, the line art on our banners, the models are sort of moving on down the model range with the new design of the reference. So yeah, that sort of design language for the appearance is, is making its way down. The Diptyques are joined by a beautiful Michelle Gyro SE turntable, a very iconic turntable produced by the Michelle family since 1968, hand built in England. Below that, powering everything, we have an AudioFlight FLS10 integrated amplifier, and then that is joined by a uh, Inuos Zenith streamer. Beautiful equipment. So tell me, like normally when you have planar magnetic technology, you don't get a lot of bass out of these kind of things, and you need to supplement kind of a hybrid speaker where you have part of it planar and then the rest of it is like a, a conventional bass driver. Absolutely. How are they getting this amount of bass out of here? Because this place, it had some deep bass. I looked at the first subwoofer, didn't see one. I did see the um, the speaker itself moving. You could see it vibrating. Absolutely. Give us a little bit about how that technology worked. Of course, so traditionally with planar magnetics, what you have is a sheet or a perforated metal sheet and then a sheet of mylar plastic stretched over that. And then, at least in this configuration, you have magnets on either side centering a uh, aluminum foil voice coil that is essentially glued to the mylar sheet. What we have here in this model is actually two separate panels. To, uh, I guess you'd consider it mid-bass frequency range from 35 hertz up to 16 to cross over to the quasi-ribbon tweeter, so a mylar-backed aluminum foil tweeter. This is actually, a, obviously, a two-way speaker here, so you don't get any interference as the base panels do their thing and get pretty low. The main reason why you're getting extra bass out of the base panels, again, compared to traditional magnetic planar speakers, is pretty simple. There's a little more clearance within the driver structure itself. You don't have, uh, again, like a traditional speaker or a traditional uh, magnetic planar, such a limited space for the mylar to move. And in these units, you have about five uh, five times the amount of space for the driver to move compared to traditional magnetic planers. So obviously more movement in the mylar, more air is moving, more low end. So what is the, uh, I guess, what is the advantage of why does Diptyque do planar magnetic speakers instead of traditional cone drivers? What's the story behind that? Pretty plainly, they're quick as can be. The transients is amazing and you get a, a, the iconic wall of sound out of some planar magnetics. You know, if you sit down in a nice uh, listening position with some planar magnetics going, close your eyes, it's impossible to pinpoint where the speakers are, of course, when, when things are set up properly and, and your room is uh, sort of accommodating to the technology. These are a dipole, so you have uh, sound coming out of the front as well as the back, a 180 degree reflection off the wall. So compared to a traditional box speaker, it's a little bit more difficult to position them properly. Um, but Again, once you nail it down, you close your eyes, it's, it's like the artist that you're listening to is right in front of you. Yeah, I've noticed that before. Like last year, the first time I was introduced to this brand, I, I don't, it was a three-way model, I think that was like- The reference. The yeah. reference one. It felt like the sound was like immediate. It was like beamed into your head almost. Yeah. It was just a really unique experience. If you've never experienced a planar magnetic uh, speaker like this, I definitely suggest you guys do that. Now, in this setup, you've configured it differently than what I saw last year. Last year, the speakers were flipped, so the high-frequency transducer was on the inside. Absolutely. And personally, I like it that way because you get that stereo precise imaging and the really strong phantom center. But you guys did it a little differently this year because I think you wanted to have just wider coverage for a lot. There was a lot of people in this room. Of course. So in this room this year, we have six seats for listening. Um, with the tweeters configured inside, what you have is 
you know, uh, what you would want to do for proper positioning is aiming the tweeters directly at your head, right? You, you want the, the high frequency just nailing your right in the head. But what that does is if you're joined by somebody on your left or right, they don't have the same experience. So having the tweeters out in this case allowed us to widen the total sweet spot. Um, you know, don't want to play musical chairs every minute having somebody switch to get the perfect sound. This is sort of the compromised position for the room that we're in. I got you. Do you have any recommendations? If, if someone's building a two-channel system with a speaker like this, do you have, is there a different recommended receipt, uh, recipe for doing room acoustics or placement of the speaker compared to conventional home driver speakers? Uh, there's, there's nothing crazy to accommodate a uh, planar magnetic speaker. It's kind of the basics. You don't want a glass wall, right? <laughs> like we happen to have here. Um, but uh, as far as the basics for positioning the speakers themselves, um, there's a few rules. You kind of want minimum two feet from the back wall and about six inches from the side wall. But uh, again, depending on the room, those, uh, those restrictions can change. It is one of those things where once you have them in, in, in place right after you buy them, prepare to move them around a little bit, which in this case might be a little difficult. These guys are heavy as can be, steel chassis construction. So. Oh, and you don't realize that by looking at it. If you just look at it, you think it's just a traditional MDF or wood, but these are actually steel plates on the front and the back. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. They're tremendously heavy. These uh, could be a linebacker in the NFL and <laughs> have some, some great success there. Wow. Now, what other color, do you offer different color options? Because these are like kind of an off-white what are the different choices that people have? So what we regularly keep in stock is black and white color options. But if you are willing to wait for uh, the, the hand production in the facility in France, then transport to the United States, you can get over 160 different color options for the chassis and I believe about any color banding that you would like. Oh, very cool. Last question I have for you is these are, if, if someone wants to buy this in the United States, this is not a standard product that you find at retailers, yeah. right? Yeah. How does one go and find a local distributor or a local retailer to get a pair of speakers like this here? My first recommendation would be to actually check out fidelityimports.com. Reaching out to any of the guys there, they're more than happy to uh, find out your information, see where you're at, and find a local dealer for you. Um, you know, somebody who actually has these in a showroom to be able to demo them properly and you know, somebody who can help you out. Appreciate that. Well, Aaron, thanks for dropping all the knowledge on this brand. Guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioaux. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.